thank you very much for watching. But before we go, there's just time to play a quick quiz. And the contestants are, on my right, Adam Robertson, a history teacher who once lost three children at North Greenwich Tube Station, but found them again at Canning Town. James France, a research assistant who has a collection of over 100 bookmarks. And their captain, George Twig, a data analyst who has performed all the male and all the female roles in a one-off scar performance of Phantom of the Opera. All graduates of Durham University, they are the Durhamites. George, you lost your opening heat against the LARPers, but you beat the hot pots. How is the Only Connect experience shaping up for you? Well, what it's done is taught us the value of self-belief, so we're going to follow the advice of my old chemistry teacher, who told us it's very easy to get 100% of the questions right. All you need to do is not do anything wrong. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I'm lost in a reverie about my old chemistry teacher, Mr Walker. <sighs> I think he was the only man in the whole school. He had a terrible time. <laughs> you are facing tonight, on my left, Susie Turner, a keen roadrunner who has upgraded to the first-class carriage on a recent train journey because she had a green pen. Jeremy Turner, a researcher and librarian who once speed-tested a motorbike with a rucksack full of bread rolls down the M11. And their captain, Dave Ryan, a keen crossworder who makes a pie once a month, every month. United by a hunger for heat, they are the pyromaniacs. So, Dave, you won your first heat against the cartoonists, but you then lost to the time ladies. What have you learned from your experience so far? Well, we've learned that after a success, it is possible to crash and burn. Uh, so we're hoping to rekindle our enthusiasm today and be on fire. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, you started well, you won the toss, and you've chosen to go first. Yep. Which hieroglyph would you like? Uh, lion, please. Lion. OK, the first in a series of apparently random clues is coming up. What connects them? Your time starts now. I don't know anything about books and slippers. Next, please. Can we send John Ward? Saints, St James. Mm -hmm. St James is the same famous for slippers. Um, next, please. William, William Randolph Hearst is a newspaper tycoon. Well, um, John Randolph Hearst isn't famous. Um, next, please. Is it saints associated with shops? Not the connection, I'm afraid. Durhamites, would you like to have a go for a bonus point? The, it's something they reintroduced. That's very... What or, or unbanned, is it? Or, or Nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> now, Pyromaniacs, you talked about Marks and Spencer, and they do feature here mm -hmm. Michael Marks and Thomas Spencer. These are simply the originators of high street stores and what they sold. Cyrus oh. and James oh, Clark. Smith, is that, then? Yes, uh, William... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not St William, although some would say so when they really need some sweets at a railway station. Mm. Uh -huh. W.H. Smith, it's that William, and John Boot, oh. who started Boot. Cyrus and James Clark. Clark's the shoe oh. manufacturer. So no points there. But Durhamites, you may choose your own question. Uh, water, please. Water. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Poisoned pen. It's a sort of it's letter, yeah. isn't it? Next. Oh, I think it's these are, yeah, it's it's Castro. Yeah. These are ways the CIA tried to assassinate Fidel Castro. That is exactly <laughs> what they are. Let's have a look at all the clues. Do you know any of the stories? Um, yeah, they they tried to poison him because the idea that his beard would fill out, uh, fall out and this would make him seem less virile to the Cuban populace. <laughs> that was the fungus-filled diving suit. It was meant to cause yeah, yeah. their skin disease. The poison pen, it was a hypodermic needle inside a pen <laughs> that they said was such a thin needle he wouldn't mm. even notice it. My doctor says the same. Don't fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite is clue three. Seashell packed with explosives. <laughs> yes, intelligence officials thought they could use Castro's love of scuba diving to bring them down. They plan to hide explosives inside a large seashell painted with exotic colours to lure the ocean-loving <laughs> communist. But it was discarded as impractical. That last one, exploding cigar, well, that was when he went to New York. The idea was they'd given the cigar, it didn't work out. Castro actually was in power for sort of 30 years, died aged 90 with 11 children. Well done, CIA. <laughs> <laughs> There are some others here. Not all CIA. Some of them are sort of Cuban exile groups. They dusted his shoes with poison. Well, they didn't, but that was a plan. They thought they could bribe his lover to murder him. 
spray a TV studio with LSD. We've tried this on many an occasion. <laughs> <laughs> People are concentrating too hard, it simply doesn't work. This sounds great. A botulin poisoned chocolate milkshake. I mean, it sounds sort of delicious, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very well done. Coming in after two clues, you get three points. Ways that the CIA tried to kill Fidel Castro. Mm. Pyromaniacs, what would you like? Uh, twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Sounds like a piano. Maybe Next, please. Ice pick wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next please. Beyond that. Oh yeah. Their first names are anagrams of each other. Their first names are anagrams of each other. Didn't need to. The last clue, the wonderful <laughs> Edmonds. What are those first names? Noel uh, Edmonds. Okay, right. Noel Edmonds, mm -hmm. Leon Trotsky, Elon, Elon Musk, Musk, and mm -hmm. by a process of elimination. Olen Steinhauer. Oh, you got it first time. <laughs> Olen Steinhauer is an author of spy fiction. Very well done. All their first names are anagrams of each other. Back to you, Durhamites, for a choice. Uh, Horned Viper, please. OK, here are your clues. What do they have in common? First one coming up now. That was... Uh, mm -hmm. Always 1830. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Next. Oh, it's, um, it's a it's a white line in um, the, the, the high jump, the, the long jump, yeah, something like that. One more, one more. Yeah, come on. Next. Oh, yeah, it's white. Is it? White flag. Yeah, it's white flag. Uh, white flag. A white flag is the right answer. Again, you didn't need to see the last one, the giveaway clue, surrender. Tell me about what we're looking at. Oh, Dido hit was... Uh, uh, white flag. Uh, fair jump is when you're in the, the long jump or the triple jump um, in athletics. That's right. The white flag, flag indicates yeah. that it's a fair jump. And what if it's a foul jump? What do they do? It's a red flag. A red yeah. flag. And the Bourbon Restoration, yes, that's when the monarchy came back after Napoleon. They had a white flag. What does a white flag indicate in NASCAR? Uh, there's been a horrendous crash. No, I think that's just a given. They don't even indicate that. <laughs> no, uh, it, that there's one lap to go. That's what that means. Very well done. Good flag knowledge. Back to you, Pyromaniacs, for a choice. Uh, two reads, please. OK, two reads. You see, we all listen for the music, don't we? And the, the <laughs> blessed <laughs> silence. <laughs> two reads. These are going to be picture clues. What connects them? First one coming up now. Sweet. Yeah, next, please. The smell of that, isn't it? It's like a cow. Uh, next, please. Spider plants. So hang on. Are they named after? Are they named after? Are they named after animals? Maybe. Yeah. Okay, next one. Next, please. Yeah. They've got animals in their names. Plants with animals in their names. You recognise the spider plant and the foxglove. What are the others? Is it cowslip? The second one. It is cowslip. Yes. Yeah. And the first one, not lavender. Catnip. Oh, catnip. 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 Oh. Lovely catnip mm. that cats love to roll around in. Mm. Very well done. Durhamites, what would you like? I have horse, please. I'm not surprised. You wouldn't like it, really, would you? Because it's the music <laughs> question, but we have to have it. This is the music question. You'll be hearing your clues. What connects them? First one coming in now. Next. This man I meet walks up our street. He's a worker for the council. Next. Has been 20 years. I left a good job in the city. He's working for the man every night and yeah. day. Next. And I never left. Grandfather and me around Nassau town we did roam. Is it the seven deadly sins? It is not the seven deadly sins. Did you come here thinking, well, if we don't know the answer to the music question, we're going to go seven deadly sins? There wasn't thinking behind it. Not much, admittedly. <laughs> More than it much. wouldn't be a bad guess. If I was a contestant on the show, I would make sure that if I didn't know, I would guess snooker, the rainbow and the seven deadly sins at least once during the quiz. But not in this case. <laughs> Pyromaniacs, would you like to have a go for a bonus point? Um, well, dignity. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you literally laugh as your opponents claim dignity. But in <laughs> fact, that was the second clue. Dignity by Deacon Blue, you probably recognised. But no, that doesn't apply to all of them. What is dignity in that Deacon Blue song? A ship. A ship. A boat. Yeah. Yeah. Sloop John B. Sloop John B. First yeah. one, the Flying Dutchman, yeah. the Wagner, about that ghost ship. And the third Ooh, one you didn't know? That's Proud Mary, a boat, and the original is uh, yeah, Credence yeah. Clearwater Revival, but we had the Tina Turner version, yeah, I, I Can Tina Turner. Mm. Do you know the introduction to the Tina Turner version of that song? I've got the words here, it's rather magnificent, because <laughs> it's a cover, and Tina Turner says, hold on to your horses, my impression of Tina Turner is coming up. She becomes suspiciously like me in this impression. You know, every now and then, I think you might like to hear something from us nice and easy, but there's just one thing. You see, we never ever do nothing nice, easy. We always do it nice and rough. So we're gonna take the beginning of this song and do it easy, but then we're gonna do the finish rough. Very much like the series arc of Only Connect. <laughs> Some will say it was the Tina Turner cover of Proud Mary. All of those songs featured boats. That means at the end of round one, the Pyromaniacs have three points, the Durhamites have five. Round two now, the sequence is round, and Pyromaniacs, you'll be going first again, so what would you like? The Horned Viper, please. OK, the first in a series of clues is coming up. I'd like to know what would be fourth. Your time starts now. And next, please. Uh, something that's LMN. Not it, I'm afraid. Durhamites, would you like to go for the bonus? The code for a surprise appearance at a Japanese wrestling event, a.k.a. X. <laughs> it's an acceptable answer, not the one <laughs> <laughs> I expected to hear. We went with 2007 Kylie Minogue album. What is the sequence? OK, clear on opera, I wasn't sure of. Tony Harrison's class epic is V. Mm. Uh, Stone's presidential biopic is W, so it's uh, U... V, W, X, that is the alphabet, yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> I heard you say, I mean, if I had a pound for every time I've heard the words, what is the name of the Klingon opera well. <laughs> during my time on this show? You is the answer. So you, Tony Harrison's poem, V, Stone's presidential biopic, that's Oliver Stone's biopic of George W. Bush, W, and mm -hmm. something represented by X, and you came up with a very imaginative one. Well done. <laughs> so you get the bonus point, and you may choose your own question. What would you like? Water, please. Water. These are going to be picture clues. What sort of thing would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Here's the first. I can't think we need any more. Next. Oh, he's a V. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and 18 in white inside a red square. Is the right answer. And why? These are the... Uh, I think these are the Peggy ratings for video games. That's exactly right. These numbers appear on coloured backgrounds to indicate what age the video games oh. are for. And what colour is the background of the rating that means suitable for a three-year-old? It's not, like, pitch black or something, is it? No, it's green. None of them is suitable for a three-year-old. <laughs> but they've got a special green rating, apparently, should you want to put your three-year-old in front of a video game. There are separate icons, apparently, uh, to show various content that they might include. Violence, bad language, fear, sex, drugs, discrimination. I mean, this is lovely. I wonder if they're all in the three-year-old game. <laughs> are you video games players? Uh, yes. So you recognise that immediately. Mm. What happens when you get to 18? You get to blow people's heads off. Um, basically, although there are a lot of children... I saw an eight-year-old boy in a Call of Duty shirt quite recently, and that is definitely a blowy, heady-off game. Lovely. So there's some good parenting going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Pyromaniacs, what would you like? Lion, please. Lion. OK. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. It's green, it's orange. It's grey. Next, please. Fifty with the F black 
I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> Not the right answer, I'm afraid. Dynamite, do you want to have a go for a bonus? Uh, 64. Would you like me to give you the colours? You don't need to, because <laughs> colours don't matter and it isn't 64. <laughs> OK. I'm afraid. What do you think the sequence is? We don't have a clue, I'm afraid. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes, it, it, you should have stopped a little bit earlier in the word. It's 60. And the colours don't matter. The colours were just an extra little clue to help you notice that none of these words contain repeated letters. <laughs> Mm. Ah. So the number 10 doesn't have any repeat letters and the next number after 10 that doesn't have any is 40. What's the other interesting thing about the number 40? It's the only one where they're all the yeah, letters are in alphabetical order. They're in alphabetical oh. order, exactly so. And oh, the next one after 40 <laughs> is 46. <laughs> and uh, the next number in which there are no repeated letters after 46 is 60. So nobody spotted that one. But Dharamites, you may have a question. What would you like? Eye of horse, please. The eye of horse. OK, what will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. Next. So he's a. What does he do? Is he like. No, he's a national. He's the first British people in space. Let's. Um, or maybe this, like, space flights from America, so. Uh, the first British person in space. First Helen Sharman. Is the right answer. Oh, <laughs> Very oh, well yeah, yeah. done. And why? OK, so... <laughs> Adam is so bad. <laughs> Literally, the only reason we got this is because James thought Michael Fole might be an astronaut. We think it's the fourth, third and second British people in space. That's exactly so. And, and they are astronauts, although Helen Sharman, the first one, was not an astronaut. She, she went to Mir in 1991. She was driving home in 1989 when she heard an advert on the radio, astronaut wanted no experience necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and she beat 13,000 candidates. I mean, it's, it's like when you apply to Only Connect, you had to beat <laughs> as many as four candidates <laughs> to get here. And uh, it was 13,000 for Helen Sharman. Very well done. Back to you, Pyromaniacs, for a choice. Twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. OK, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. It's a comic book, I think. Mm. It could be more than 2028, not me today. Yeah. Next, please. Well, that's the capital of the Olympics, right? Yeah. When you think it's the 100th anniversary, so it was Brazil that created the. No, I'm saying 50, is that the way they got there? Next, please. So it is the Olympics, is it? No, no. They're the capitals. Right. Two seconds. Um, 1996, Washington, D.C. Very well done. Very well done. And why is it? <laughs> because the Olympics were in America in 1996 and Washington, D.C. is the capital. Yes, what it is, it's times when the Olympics were held by cities that were not the capital cities and these are the capital yeah. cities. So, in 1996, the Olympics were in... Atlanta. Atlanta. And then in 2000, they were in Sydney, but Canberra is the capital. And then it was in capital cities until 2016 in Rio de Janeiro. Where it's actually winter. These are the Summer Olympics, mm -hmm. but in Rio it was the winter. But that's the, you could say the same for 2012, couldn't you? Because it's sort of always winter in the UK, so it sort of comes <laughs> the same. And the next time that will happen is in 2028, where the Olympics will be in... Los Angeles. Again? Los Angeles, where they so often are. People love yeah, going there. And uh, the capital, Washington, D.C. Very well done. Going backwards to 96. Dharamite's the last question of the round. The two reads is for you. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. <laughs> Next. Okay, so we just the the thing that happens is it's not gonna be like it's not gonna be going to the alphabet. No, it's the it's the end of the table. Okay, so uh next. Um I think it's a little one. So if you're miming uh, a church, for instance. For what reason? Okay, so it's um it's YMCA. Mime that church so I can see if you're correct. <laughs> It looks like an A. You get the points. Very well done. Can you talk me through the whole sequence, please? OK, so the... Am I going to have to uh, act all these out? Yes, you yeah. are. Good. <laughs> OK. So do it with me, guys. OK, so... Uh, Aussie Rules Field Empire, game over. Mo Farrow, I've won. 
<laughs> Semaphore signal at X, let's all go the same way. There we go. Is that right? And or is it... Does it is, no, because the, you've got to think, way, it, yeah. the viewers are looking now. Is, does that yeah, look like that, a C? Yeah. Right hand over the top, or, isn't it? Yeah, yeah be... that's it. Yeah. And form a scrum, as I've just said, but I'll do it again. A. Brilliant. Although apparently the village people say that the M shouldn't be done like this, it should be done like that. It's not an M, though. I've never seen anyone do that. Well, before. they think it is down. I mean, I don't want to fall out <laughs> with the village people. That's how they say it should be on the sternum at chest height. But very well done. Spelling out Y M C A. Nicely demonstrated. That means at the end of round two, the Pyromaniacs have five points, the Durhamites have 13. <laughs> Connecting all time now, 16 jumbled clues that the teams need to sort into four connected groups of four. You'll be going first, Durhamites, so please choose lion or water. Water, please. OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall, starting now. Essex Town, of bond, Colchester. Isn't it? Yeah, covalent bond, junk bond, bell bond, and premium, premium bond. bond. Okay, so that does a clue, definitely. Places uh, in Essex. Braintree, Basil Malden. Basildon and Greys. Oh. Okay. Yes, oh, Basildon bond is as well. So junk, bell, and um, covalent. Okay. Okay. We'll just, we'll, just keep, um, we'll just keep going. Debris, uh, trash, yeah, waste, waste, and litter. Litter. Okay. And you junk. can have junk as well. Okay, let's try junk with that. Good. Okay. okay. Three so lives now, now we've got. Um, okay, they are homophones, four parts of the body. So waist, muscle, toe, and heart. Yeah. And so. Simple as that. Very well done. Did you like that better than the wall in your last game? Very, very, very much. much. So. Very much. So. Oh, we solved that as well. We solved, yeah, well, we we solved this quicker. So this, this was a very quick one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about the first group: Greys, Braintree, and so on. Places in Essex. Good Essex knowledge. Is one of you from Essex? No, we're not. You lived in Kent, didn't you? Kent. Yeah. yeah. My mum was from. Essex. Very much not Essex. That's <laughs> Is Kent very much very not much Essex? Not Essex. <laughs> you wouldn't say that if you came from Aberdeen, <laughs> would you? It's all relative. And what about the green group? Junk, debris, trash, litter. Synonyms for garbage. Ways of saying garbage, mm -hmm. absolutely so. Waste, toe, and so on. These are homophones for parts of the body. Yes, they are. Waste, toe, muscle, heart. And the turquoise group, bale, basildon, and so on. They can be followed by bond. Types of bond. What is a covalent bond? It's a chemical bond where atoms share electrons. A bond between non-metal atoms. Very good. So you found all the groups, you've got all the connections, you get a bonus of two for getting that all right. It's the maximum of ten. Very well done. Let's bring in the pyromaniacs now, give them the other wall, the lion wall, and see how they get on with solving it. You've got two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. Men in here, 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 no, people are really living. Bottom. Bottom, yeah. Bottom, crazy, yeah. And then rich. Oh, well done. Uh, Good. Bolton. Oh, Bolton, Berry. The, the what are they? Lancashire Town's homophones. Oh, yeah. Sale. Sale, uh, very good. Uh, and fern no. furnace? No. Hide. Hide. Yeah, well done. Okay. Three lives yeah. now. So let's have a think at these. Barnacle, stick to so things. We've got the other things. Stone, furnace. Oh, it's step, I hate to think, but no, you've only got it. But then, like the rest. Pimples. Barnacle. Goose pimples, goose eggs, barnacle goose. Oh, goose right. step. That's good. Goose step, that's it. Goose. What? Barnacle goose. goose. Or goose. Goose, goose egg. egg and goose pimples. That's it, you solved the wall. Very well done. And what about the connections? Tell me about the blue group, botting Brazier and so on. The first, they're the newsreaders. They're newsreaders on Sky TV. Which ones did you know? Murnahan, because he used to be on Not Sky and we haven't got Sky. Right. <laughs> Dermot Murnan, Colin Brazier, Anna Botting, Sophie Ridge. Sophie Ridge from Bell, yeah. News yeah. presenters. And the green group, Bolton, Hyde and so on. They're uh, homophones of Northwest Towns. Well, I'll take Northwest Towns. Greater Manchester, Manchester, I think, is probably yeah, the yeah. reason. But uh, they're all homophones for towns. In the Northwest, Manchester specifically. And the next group, Egg, Pimples, Barnacle, Step. Goose. Goose. 
Goose, that's right. And you can put goose before all of them. There's a barnacle oh. goose, but there's also a goose barnacle. Oh, so okay. goose egg, goose pimples, goose barnacle and goose step. I won't ask you to demonstrate. <laughs> And the next one, stove at Samovar Etna Furnace. Is this thing called um, Pyromania? It's one of these hot things. <laughs> They're basically <laughs> hot things. Heating devices, yes. Etna is a vessel for heating liquids and a saucer of burning alcohol. Oh, mm. Sounds good. Nice. Nice. Reminds me, I must get back to my dressing room. <laughs> they are all heating devices. So you found all the groups and you gave me all the connections. You get the bonus of two. That is the maximum of ten. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The Pyromaniacs have 15 points. The Durhamites have 23. We're going into the missing vowels round. Fingers on buzzers. I can tell you that the first group of clues are all angelic phrases. Daramites. Guardian angel. Correct. Daramites. In the hands of the angels. Not it. You lose a point, I'm afraid. Pyromaniacs, do you know? No, nope. it's on the side of the angels. You'd need an N and a D, various other things. Next clue. Maniacs. Angels on horseback. Correct. Pyromaniacs. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Very good. Next category, devilish phrases. Pyromaniacs. The devil is in the detail. Yes, it is. Pyromites. Better the devil you know. Correct. Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. Correct. Pyromaniacs. Talk of the Devil. And he will appear. Next category, darts players from Stoke. Durhamites. Fill the power, Taylor. I love this group. Pyromaniacs. Darren Jackpot Lewis. Uh, there's no such player, I'm afraid. <laughs> Durhamites, do you know? Adrian Jackpot Lewis. Adrian oh, Jackpot oh. Lewis. Next clue. Don't know this one? It's Mark Frosty the Throwman Frost. <laughs> Next clue. Pyromaniacs. Andy the Hammer Hammer. Andy the Hammer Hamilton is, of <laughs> course, the right answer. People will have been shouting at home. <laughs> but it's the end of the quiz and looking at the final scores. The winners and through to the next round with 27 points are the Durhamites. Noble second with 19, the Pyromaniacs. Very well played. You've done really well at this impossible quiz. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Durhamites will look forward to seeing you again later in the series. And I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the quiz that's more difficult than breaking up with a long-term boyfriend. Speaking of which, if Chris Smith is watching, it's over. You've probably figured it out. I mean, it's been 16 years. I know I should have told you to your face. I can't bear the confrontation. I'm sorry. It's finished and I won't be turning up to the Swiss Cottage Odeon. Enjoy, love, actually. Goodbye. <laughs>